We tend to think of cavemen carrying wooden clubs, but the weapon of choice in the Stone Age was the stone hand axe. Ancient humans were especially skilled at making what is called the Arculean hand axe, and their skill in using them as a melee weapon is a scary thought. It has been proposed that these hand axes were even used as Stone Age bling to attract a mate, which is a very interesting idea in itself. These weapons could indeed have been used to attract a mate, evoking power, dominance and authority as well as offering protection to females. This is basically the same as mating goes in the modern world as well. The melee weapon is any handheld weapon used in hand-to-hand -hand combat, essentially functioning as an additional, and more violent and deadly, extension of the ancient human's arm. In contrast, ranged weapons such as a throwing spear is any other weapon, capable of engaging targets at a distance beyond immediate physical contact. The term originated in the 1600s from the French word, which refers to disorganized hand-to-hand -hand combat, a close quarters battle, or a confused fight especially involving many combatants. Melee weapons can be broadly divided into three categories, pointed weapons, edged weapons, and blunt weapons. These weapons have been used by humans for at least a million years. Battle axes used by the Vikings and other warrior groups were basically improvements to the ancient stone hand axe. Pointed weapons such as spears typically have a sharp point designed to inflict penetrating trauma and the length of such weapons gives a range advantage. The spear was also used by ancient humans to take down prey and probably as protection, but it was not as useful as a hand axe. Edged weapons, including stone hand axes, are designed to cause cutting, dismemberment, and exsanguination injuries. These are used to slash, thrust, stab, or cause blunt force trauma. Blunt weapons include the classic caveman clubs, these weapons are designed to cause blunt trauma, such as a blow to the head. Tellingly, early humans suffered frequent head injuries, but often lived long enough for those injuries to heal. That's the result of a study that analyzed 2,350,000-year-old skulls from a cave in Spain. The study also found that recovery wasn't inevitable. Several of the individuals in the cave apparently died from violent blows to the head. A club to the head is an efficient way to kill or disable. Hand axes are fast, powerful, precise weapons, so prehistoric Homo sapiens and Neanderthals show frequent trauma to the skull. Another sign of warfare is the parry fracture, a break to the lower arm caused by warding off blows, which also show up frequently in ancient human skeletons. Neanderthals in Europe managed to fend off modern humans for tens of thousands of years with these melee weapons until a certain group of modern humans known as Cro-Magnon arrived with the bow and arrow. It's exceedingly unlikely that modern humans met the Neanderthals and decided to just live and let live. Neanderthalensis were skilled big game hunters, using spears to take down deer, ibex, elk, bison, even rhinos and mammoths. It defies belief to think they would have hesitated to use these weapons if they were threatened. Archaeology suggests such conflicts were commonplace and an aggressive military strategy is also good evolutionary strategy. But Neanderthals are lightweights compared to some of our other evolutionary neighbors. You would not want to encounter Homo heidelbergensis or Homo erectus deep in the jungle. Some specimens were more than seven feet tall with thick bones. They were also cannibalistic at times, which means they knew how to go headhunting and win against other archaic humans. Their brains were smaller than those of Neanderthal or Homo sapiens, that's a tactical disadvantage, but they probably fought with an animalistic ferocity. On the other hand, the modern human brain can work against us in combat. Many animals continue to struggle long after they are shot, for example, while modern humans tend to collapse immediately, under the psychological stress of being wounded. When it comes to fighting for our lives, we are sometimes too smart for our own good. One ancient pre-human, called Paranthropus Boisi, would also have been a terror in combat. Often described as a gorilla head on a human body, the creature had powerful jaws and enormous teeth, as well as well-developed back muscles. They did not have hand axe technology, but just imagine how dangerous a male silverback gorilla would be armed with an axe. At its most basic, 
Technology is humanity's attempt at controlling our environment, rather than our environment controlling us. Today's technology is diverse and complex and modern society could not function without it, and yet all technology can be traced back over a million years ago to the Paleolithic period, aka the Old Stone Age, when human ancestors first began to make stone tools. Acheulean stone tools are characterized by their distinctive oval and pear-shaped forms, and were made during the Lower Paleolithic period by Homo erectus, as well as other human species including Homo heidelbergensis and, much later, Neanderthals. The Lower Paleolithic period is dominated by the, the Acheulean stone tool industry. This tradition constituted a veritable revolution in Stone Age technology but is best characterized by the Acheulean hand axe a multi-purpose tools used in a variety of tasks. Acheulean stone tools have been found over much of the Old World, from southern Africa to northern Europe and to the Indian subcontinent. Rather like a Swiss army knife, it could be used in a variety of ways, for scraping, chopping and butchering. There was even a blunt end so it could have been used as a mallet for knocking something into the ground. It really was multi-purpose. It was also quite sharp. Studies of surface wear patterns reveal hand axes were used to butcher and skin game, dig in soil, and cut wood or other plant materials. Additionally, Acheulean tools are sometimes found with animal bones that show signs of having been butchered. Although we have no real evidence for a hierarchy in society at that time, a hand axe like this would have been an enormously valuable object. They would have had to hunt for their food and butcher the animal in order to eat and get material for their clothes and shoes. The axe would have been a very important tool that would have been sharpened and reused over a period of time. Although hand axes continue to be made during the Middle Paleolithic, this period sees the development of the Levalloy technique of stone tool manufacture, which includes striking flakes from a prepared core. This technique continues into the Mousterian tradition, which is characterized by the production of hafted tools, aka stone tools placed into wood shafts. While both Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis are assumed to have relied on some scavenging during this time, there is also clear evidence of hunting and gathering as well as ritualized burials. One of the most unique hand axes ever found, the West Torft's hand axe has a shell fossil in the middle of it, showing that ancient toolmakers enjoyed the aesthetics of their work. Discovered at West Torft's in Norfolk, England, this remarkable Acheulean hand axe was made around 250,000 years ago long before Homo sapiens had reached the British Isles. While most of these tools are impressive in their own right, this one is even more special, it has been carefully shaped around a fossil shell, which sits right in the middle of it. In fact, the West Torft's hand axe is not the only example where the stone has been selected, at least in part, for its aesthetic qualities. A 400,000-year-old axe from Swanscombe in Kent is napped around a fossil urchin. The positioning suggests that the individual who made the tool did so intentionally, suggesting that there have been toolmakers who also appreciate the aesthetic qualities of their work for over a quarter of a million years. Finally, the Hapisborough hand axe was found near Hapisborough, England, and its discovery meant that we actually found evidence for human occupation in England 200,000 years earlier than previously thought, so it has rewritten the history books. This axe is 500,000 years old so we're talking about something that was made by a very early Neanderthal. It's very old, in fact it's the oldest hand axe found in northwest Europe. The area would have been joined to Europe at that time because of an ice age, so you could have walked to France, but in the same area archaeologists discovered shards of flint that are twice as old as the hand axe itself, so we know it was a local material and wasn't brought in from anywhere else. It's more crafted than it really needs to be for the purpose it was intended, so somebody has obviously wanted to create a tool that was nice to look at as well as being nice to hold and use. Arizona State University has a large collection of hand axes from the old world, some more sexy than others. Butchery sites of mammoths have been found on the North Norfolk coast around the same area the hand axe was found, so we have several flint tools in the collection. But this is most unique and the oldest one. Some archaeological sites have hundreds of hand axes littering the areas, suggesting that hand axe making was an industry, maybe the oldest occupation that was passed down from one generation to the next.